Hello everyone. Today let's look and discuss this code portion number 104 maximum depth of a binary tree. Given the root of a binary tree, we need to realize maximum depth. A binary tree's maximum depth is the number of nodes along the longest path from the root node down to the farthest leaf node. So basically what they given question, they given on binary tree, okay? We need to find its height of the tree, okay? From its root node to the leaf node, okay? So in this example, they given uh, 3 9 20 and 9s left and right are null null and 20s left is 15 and right is 7 and the output is returning 3 okay let's we can proper understand the white board let's we can take one example see we are starting from root okay this is count will be 1 and we are reaching here left if this will be leaf node so count is 2 So the ma maximum depth will be two. See, now if we travel in right means there will be two ways. We can travel one, three, four, and one, three, five. This will be one count. This will be two count. This is three count. So travel in right means one, two, three count. So in two and three, maximum is three. So we are returning three as our answer. Next, we can discuss the how the recursive approach is going to work. Here root node is one. Okay, I will be passing in the Function one. Now I will check this one is null or not. It's not null because it contains left node and right node. Now I will be recursive calling it left. The left is two. Now f two is called by this one. Okay. Now check this two is null or not. It's not null. Okay. Now I will be calling it left. Its left is null. If it is a null, means I will be returning zero. Now I will go back. Now I will be recursive calling it right. Its right is null. Now f null. I will be returning zero. If it is null, means I will return zero. Here f two uh, left and right are null. If it is a null, means what I will be doing? I will be using on logic return. I will using max. Here left comma right plus one. Here left is zero and right is zero. Here max of zero comma zero. I will take plus one. Max of zero comma zero means same value. So I will take any one. I will be adding one. Now f two has value one. Now its left has been completed. Now it's time to travel right. Ah, uh, f one's right is three. Now three has been called. Now I'll check this three is null or not. It's not null. If it is not null, means I will be traversing its left. Now f four is been called. Now check the so four is null or not null. It's not null. If it is not null, means I will be traversing its left. Its left is null. Now f null is called. If it is a null, means I will be returning zero. Its left has been completed. Now it's time to traverse right. Its right is zero. Now f null is been called. I will be returning zero. Now I will apply same logic. I will what I will do? Return maximum left is zero and right is zero. Max of zero comma zero. I will add one. Now I will get one. Now f four has value one. Now f four f three left has completed. Now it's time to traverse right. Its right is five. Now f five has been called. Now checking this five root is null or not null? It's not null. If it is not null, means we are traversing its left. Its left is null. Now f null is called. If it is an element, we are returning zero. Now it will go back. Now you are checking its right. Its right is null. Now f null is being called. If it is an element, we are returning zero. Now we are applying same. Max of left comma right plus one. Here left is zero and right is zero, and we are adding one. Max of zero comma zero is zero. Zero plus one. Now f i value is one. Now it's time to calculate f three. F three is left and right. Here f three is left is f of four left is one, and f and its right is one. We are adding one. Max of one comma one is one plus one two. Now we are will be returning two. Now f of three's value is two. Now we are calculating this f of one's left and right. So this will be returning max of if f of one's left is one and right is two. Now we are adding plus one. Max of one comma two is two. Plus one. Now we are returning three. Now from root node to the leaf nodes, the maximum depth is i is three. 
so we are written in three as our answer which we can uh, understand how the logic is going to work in the coding part now base condition if the node root is null means we will be returning zero if the root node is not null means what we are doing we are calculating the maximum depth of left subtree recursively after that traversing its recursive left now we are recursively traversing its right by calculating the maximum depth of right subtree recursively after that finally what we are doing we will be returning the maximum depth of both subtree after that we are adding plus 1 if we can understand the time complexity and space complexity of this logic, the time complexity is taking big of n, where n is the number of nodes in the binary, we are traversing all the nodes. So it is taking the time of big of n. When it comes to the space complexity, it is taking big of n. Because the function makes a recursive calls to the each node in the tree, so it is taking the space of big of n. Let's we can run the code. Yeah, this is accepted solution. Now it's time to understand the iterative approach. Let's we can understand the, how the iterative approach is going to work. In the iterative approach, I will be taking a Q data structure. Q works based on the P4. First in, first out. Let's we can create one Q. Starting, I will be store 0. To store the how many depth it contains from the root node to the left node, I take a one variable depth. After that, what I will be doing, I will be storing the root. This is a root right, I will be stored in the queue. The size is 1 now. Now, its count will be incremented to 1. 3 is the front element right. What I will be doing, I will be stored in the node. After that, I will be pop out from the queue. Now, I will check this 3 node as left child and right child exist. If there exist means, this I will be pushed into the 9 and 20. I will be pushed. In next iteration, the size value will be 2. My depth will be incremented to now front element is 9, I will be stored in the node. After that, I will be pop out from the queue. Now I will be checking this 9, left child and right child exist. Here left is null and the right is null. So I will not push into the queue. In next situation, my 20 is the front element. I will be stored in the node. After that, I will be pop out from the queue. Now I will check the 20 is left child and right child exist. Yeah, it existed. So I will push into the queue. 15 and 7. The size is now, depth is incremented to 3. Now, in the friend, uh, next iteration, 15 is the front element. I will be stored in the node. After that, I will be pop out from the queue. Now, I will check the node 15 as left child and right child exists. They are not exist because they are null. So, I will not push into the queue. In next iteration, 7 is the front element. I will be stored in the node. After that, I will be pop out from the queue. Now, check the node 7, left child and right child exists. The left is null, the right is null. So, I will not push into the queue. Once my queue is becomes empty, then I will be returning this depth. My depth is here 3. I will be returning answer 3. Let's we can enter into the coding part. First base condition. If the root is null means we are returning 0. Now, we are taking one variable depth. I will be initialized to 0. Now, we are creating a queue with the node of tree node type with the name queue. After that, we are pushing the root in the queue by using the push operation. Now, I will take down condition. The queue should not be empty. Until that, my condition will work. If the condition is true, means what I will be doing, I will store my queue size in the size variable. The depth will be incremented. Now I will take one for loop. It will start from 0. It will travel up to the size of the queue. I will be storing the friend node in the node of tree node type. After that I will be pop by using pop function. If the node left child and right child are existed means just I will be pushed into the queue. If the node right child existed means I will push into the queue. Once the queue becomes empty, the condition becomes false. 
finally i will be written in the depth this is the logic by using the uh, iterative approach let's we can understand the time complexity and space complexity of this logic the time complexity is taking b of n where n is the number of nodes in the binary tree we are visiting all the nodes so it is taking the time of big of n where it comes to the space complexity it is taking big of w where w is the width of the tree it is taking space of breadth of the tree because we are storing the level wise so it is taking the space of big of w let's we can run the code yeah it is accepted let's we can submit yeah accepted solution thank you guys for watching my video if you like this video please give me like